Uh, hello everyone, thank you for attending the workshop. Uh, today I will discuss the TT body form fermionic theory and I revisit it. This work uh, is collaborated with uh, Pilchin Lee in Kias and uh, Gyeongsun Lee uh, Jist, who is the PhD student, and he is also attending this workshop. Uh, I will first uh, discuss, uh, explain the, some motivation of our work. And uh, I also begin with some take home message who maybe get bored uh, of uh, this long. Uh, uh, talk, and then I will discuss some details of the uh, my uh, our work on the uh, TT body formation of the free scalar field and the TT body formation of free fermion, and then I will discuss a uh, uh, negative norm state, and uh, I will also talk about the TT body formation of n equal one comma one supersymmetric model and uh, its relation to the Green Schwartz action. So motivation. So TT body formation is irrelevant deformation from the IR to UV uh, generated by the determinant of the energy moment tensor. And uh, one of the uh, uh, important feature of the, this TT body formation is this deformed spectrum. So uh, the deformed spectrum energy and momentum is completely determined by this uh, undeformed energy E and undeformed energy uh, momentum P uh, by this universal formula. So any quantum field theory, uh, uh, they, they follow the, this uh, uh, nice uh, uh, formula. And the second uh, interesting uh, feature of the TT by deformed lag, uh, deformation is uh, uh, deformed Lagrangian. So this is the, the uh, flow equation of the TT by deformation. And if you see here, the right-hand side of the this uh, uh, it has this energy moment tensor. Uh, this is the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to field. So basically, this is the differential equation for the Lagran of the Lagrangian. So we can solve it in principle perturbatively, and uh, usually we, we know the exact answer, at least classically. And the initial condition of the, this differential equation, of course, is undeformed Lagrangian. So for example, free scalar field, we obtain the this square root uh, Lagrangian, and uh, uh, this is also related to the number of action for 3D target space with static agent. And uh, of course, this is very difficult to uh, analyze because uh, that's why we study the of action rather than number of action. So here, the one of the motivations, starting point of our work is that, so we know that this there is a uh, nice uh, uh, deformation uh, of the spectrum. And uh, if you give it this formula to the student, very clever student will uh, bring you, give you the, this answer. So, because in order to uh, uh, be, you can ask the, what kind of operator give the, this uh, energy spectrum. So you can write down that the Hamiltonian in this form. So Hamiltonian is uh, square root here and uh, this H is undeformed Hamiltonian. So seemingly this generated this, uh, uh, this uh, deformed energy, but uh, you can ask whether this is really true or not. So this is, uh, very nice if that is true, but uh, uh, this is maybe very clever guess. Of course, there is a very nice uh, derivation of the uh, uh, of this uh, Hamiltonian. How this uh, kind of uh, ha Hamiltonian can be derived uh, through the this uh, string, for example, number of action uh, by Tyson and the Joria James. And uh, in our work, we trying to uh, uh, find this uh, Hamiltonian, like uh, this conjecture Hamiltonian, uh, from the this deformed Lagrangian. This is kind of number of the type of the Lagrangian. Usually, uh, in most most cases, uh, we just obtain the deformed Lagrangian, and uh, that usually the end of the story. We don't like uh, analyze the, this Lagrangian anymore. But uh, you can ask whether this deformed Lagrangian indeed uh, leads to the, this deformed uh, Hamiltonian or deformed spectrum. You can ask that and uh, we uh, study, uh, we analyze it uh, perturbatively in detail how it works. 
So uh, the, I will give you the, some take home message or our research. So we, uh, we prove that there is equivalence between the two Hamiltonian. One is first you solve the uh, slow equation, obtain the, this deformed Lagrangian, and uh, usually you uh, take uh, this Legendre transformation to the Hamiltonian density. And then you take an integral of the, that Hamiltonian density, then you obtain the ha Hamiltonian. This Hamiltonian has only one integral, contain one integral. On the other hand, from the, this deformed spectrum, you can nicely guess the answer. And the, this would be a uh, maybe clever guess. And, uh, and uh, this integral contains the many integral. For, for example, this Hamiltonian includes the integral of the Hamiltonian density, but uh, because it in, it's located inside of the square root. So if you expand uh, this uh, uh, square root, then in principle, it has uh, infinitely many integrals in this expression. So we show this there is some equivalence, uh, equivalence uh, of of the, these two Hamiltonian perturbatively. So that is uh, some result. And the second uh, mess take home message is that uh, the energy moment tensor. There are two ways to evaluate the energy moment tensor in general. So one is in weather procedure, this is well known. And uh, you, in general, this energy moment tensor from the weather procedure is not symmetric. On the other end, there is a way, I mean, we can, Calculate the energy moment tensor by the variation of the uh, of the action with respect to metric, and uh, this is the uh, symmetric uh, by construction. Usually, when we uh, start uh, in the quantum field theory, uh, we don't uh, distinguish two of them uh, seriously because uh, we know that they will be in the end equivalent if you add uh, like an improved term and so on. However, is it really equivalent in the TT bar deformation? So when you solve the, this uh, flow equation, you can use either energy moment tensor from the Moeda procedure or the metric variation. And uh, you might say that they might be equivalent because in the end, uh, they, there is no physical difference. However, there is really indeed some very di big difference between the, these two, uh, 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 two mass, uh, two, uh, energy moment tensor. So one Lagrangian, you can obtain, evaluate from the Noether and the other is metric variation. And at, even at classical level, there is quite different. So that's the one, like a big message. And the other one is uh, a TT bar deformation of the supersymmetric model. So on the right-hand side, it looks, it, it's not, if, we, if you're using the, this uh, deformation, then right-hand side is not the supersymmetric, then in, you can you might say that mm, supersymmetry would be broken. However, uh, it's not that true. So uh, it it already there are many signal and the people already people, many people also work on that. And then supersymmetry uh, it turned out that supersymmetry uh, uh, is preserved. And uh, here we also uh, show. In our work, we explicitly show that supersymmetry is preserved, and uh, we found the supersymmetric transformation and the supercharge in order in lambda. So let's uh, begin with the TT by deformation of the uh, free scalar field and uh, it's a spectrum. So let's just begin with the very basic. This is uh, like uh, probably a graduate school level. So you we have. Uh, uh, Lagrangian of the scalar field. It's, this is a free scalar field. And uh, we can calculate the, the conjugate momentum uh, by from the variation of the Lagrangian with respect to phi dot, which is the same as phi dot. And then we can also calculate the Hamiltonian and the momentum operator. Uh, and we can express it, them in terms of the each, uh, canonical variables. So this is very basic. Now let's do the same thing with the deformed Lagrangian. So the, here we already obtained the, this uh, square root TT by deformed Lagrangian. And uh, we can calculate the uh, conjugate energy moment tensor. It's just the same way, just a uh, uh, variation of the Lagrang derivative of Lagrangian with respect to phi dot. 
And the right hand side is just complicated, but uh, it's, uh, it's you, you can this is easy. And as, as usual, you can convert, invert this relation. So you can express phi dot in terms of other canonical variable. And then you can express Hamiltonian and the momentum operator in terms of uh, uh, other canonical variable. So conjugate momentum and phi, that's all. So we obtain the Hamiltonian of the deformed Lagrangian. Uh, this is nothing but the Lagrangian transformation of the, this Lagrangian uh, density. So that is very trivial. Now let's go to the, this uh, conject, conjecture the Hamiltonian. So it is very tempting to conjecture that deformed Hamiltonian would be deformed because it naturally give you the deformed spectrum. So this H0 and the P0 is uh, undeformed free Hamiltonian and the momentum. So we, we, can use, we can express them in terms of a free oscillator. So this alpha is just a free oscillator of the free theory. And uh, perturbatively in lambda, you can expand in this way. So that's it. So this, is, this tilde is a conjectural one. And the pre, in the previous slide, we obtained uh, this uh, deformed, uh, deformed Hamiltonian from the deformed Lagrangian. And of course, uh, from the, this phi and the, its conjugate momentum phi, we can also define the capital A oscillator. This is also, they also set it both alpha and the A satisfy the same, uh, uh, same algebra. And uh, here, this Hamiltonian, you can also expand the perturbatively in lambda. If these two Hamiltonian is indeed the same, this is also, of course, conjecture at this stage, then there would be some transformation from the, this capital, between the, this capital A and A bar and the alpha, alpha bar, such that these two Hamiltonian is equal under this transformation and uh, and uh, this transformation should be preserved the uh, algebra so the uh, such a map should be non local because uh, as i said uh, here there is infinite many h tilde includes infinite many integrals within the because it uh, in, it has an integral within the square root so when you expand it so in in principle it has infinite many integrals but the, the usual one, this one, has only one integral outside of square root. So in order to compare these two Hamiltonian, to map these two Hamiltonian, this map should be very non-local. And uh, as I said, this should be canonical because they satisfy same algebra, Heisenberg algebra. So this should be, this map should preserve this algebra. So it should be canonical transformation. Yeah. So uh, can you turn on? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, if it is right, okay. so you define some both capital A and the capital uh, A, A bar. So they are basically defined by integrals. A, A, capital A, capital A. Capital A, A, and capital A bar. They are defined as integral. Integral, what do you mean by integral? Integral, yes. Because it's more. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, Fourier transform. Yeah, I also, I here, phi k is a Fourier transform mode. Yes, that's right. Yeah, so how can we express the second Hamiltonian h? Yeah. Equal only one integral. Yes. In terms of a and a bar. First, I expand this square root yes. in the coordinate space. Yes. And then, then I go to the momentum space in each term order by order. So you expand the, this square root. Square root, yeah, so. So if you have the- uh, Yeah, very complicated. Yeah, non-local interaction with k space. Non-local means that some high k and then the high k bar minus q and the high, you know. That's the total momentum sum is a total. If we have the high second order in the square, and some, sometimes you can have high force. Yeah. 
Yeah, and in momentum space, yeah. In yeah, hi, yeah. In coordinates, it's local, but that means momentum space is complicated. Of course, yes, that's true. That's why it's also very complicated. But in previous hypothetical, this one. Yeah, it's very simple. <laughs> that's right. So that's why it's very non-trivial in the end. And uh, uh, I will give you the solution. So that's why uh, solution is very, very complicated. So in order to uh, find this map, you have to solve such several conditions. Of here, I I cannot calculate all order. I calculate the perturbative in each order. So I consider it such a map. So first order, when lambda equals zero, alpha should be same as capital A. So that's why first order is already determined. And uh, I will determine the A1 and the A2. So that's the, what we will do. And the, the condition is that they, they should be canonical transformation, which means that under this transformation, they satisfy these two relations. That is one condition. And uh, here I will I, I will not present how I obtain, but uh, in the our paper in the appendix, we I uh, show details. And uh, you in this condition, we will get the uh, inhomogeneous differentiation for this map. For example, inhomogeneous differentiation of the uh, A1. So this, and then that means that you have the you know, there will be homogeneous solution and the particular solution of the this inhomogeneous differential equation. So particular solution is already fixed, but the, in order to uh, fix the homogeneous part, then we in demand also this one. So we need to demand that this H is the same as AT tilde under this map, and also P should be also equal to P tilde. And, you Order. Order. order by order. So first okay. I consider first order and then I found solution and then I go to second order and I found solution. Order by order. So you found this relation between A and R Yes. Then next order. slide. Yeah. No, second. Yeah, I will explain next slide. So so this is the result for the scalar field. So A1 here is cubic and the A2 is uh, fifth order and it's very very complicated but uh, we confirm that this indeed satisfy previous all the relation and uh, you can see that this k and alpha and s is uh, like a moment uh board number so the in the momentum uh in the denominator there is r plus s and the, in the coding space it should be derivative later derivatives which means that that also represents uh, this is highly non-local and uh, we we confirm this relation uh, at classical level up to all the lambda square, which means that uh, we don't care the the ordering of the operator. Then we it we could confirm the up to lambda square this relation, but the quantum level, which we have to really care careful the this operator ordering, lambda square is very complicated, so we couldn't. But uh, at least uh, all the Lambda linear, lambda level, we confirm that it, this uh, is still true at the quantum level. So you can do the, we can do the same thing for the free, uh, free fermion. The analysis is very, it looks, uh, the procedure is very same and the final uh, result is very same, but uh, the intermediate step is very qualitatively very different from the scalar field. So that's why it's very interesting. And uh, it's also worthwhile to present it for the ped pedagogical region. Can I ask another question? So in this scalar theory, mm -hmm. you put the theory of Hamiltonian, but now since you have this relation between alpha and beta, mm -hmm. can you express Lagrangian also in terms of alpha and the A in both directions? Uh, you, in order to go there, you, have to again go back to the you integrate out the momentum. So I'm I we I have not done, but uh, yeah. yeah, you have to now like uh, change it to the the uh, this uh, canonical variable to the configuration variable. Right. So yeah. that procedure, yeah, I I have to do, but uh, I didn't. So here. 
Hamiltonian, you express a phi and each conjugate momentum, but the yeah. for the Lagrangian. Now you can use A mode, capital A mode, mm -hmm. to express the Lagrangian. It will be very complicated. Probably, yes. But maybe simplification uh, is okay. For, if we use alpha. Uh, alpha, I mean, capital A Lagrangian would be simple because in the end, the Lagrangian is just this one, should be this one. This is a starting point of, of the capital A, right? But the alpha, I don't know. So here I can obtain the capital A from the this Hamiltonian. This Hamiltonian is nothing but Lagrangian transformation of the this Lagrangian. But the alpha is just a st starting point, is just conjecture based on the dependent. Uh, 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 Here I have to think of what kind of particle. How can I define particle in both? I mean, yeah. So yeah. Capital A or capital R, 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 alpha. R, so. That I have to already think which one is. Uh, uh, I mean, based on the this one, this alpha is more like uh, relevant because uh, because it alpha is natural for the spectrum, right? So this alpha basis give the uh, uh, yeah here this uh, for example one particle state just follow the yeah, so. Yes, but if you go back to the slide with the Lagrangian, so that you have uh, expanded this to Lambda 3, something like the 3, yeah. then uh, there are some three pi system, yeah. pi to the 6. Yeah. Then it's natural to assume that two particles go in and then four particles go down. Yeah, OK. So this model of the pi is alpha. It's not okay to say. Yeah, probably. So alpha. Yeah, so in this one, yes, I agree. So, so question is then uh, the theta a is good mode? No, it's not, really no, it not good mode, probably. Yeah, uh, alpha would be good mode. Yeah. Because alpha represents like a one particle right? based on the energy. Right. So, so there are two bases for a particle set. Or, Somehow there are some hypothesis that alpha. It's not, it's not the alpha is a taking some mode, yeah, but then it's not taking on that. That I have to, yeah, of sympathy. Of sympathy. So there should be some other kind of uh, basis which are described your sympathy particles, say, mm -hmm. such that although you add this uh, lambda, um, you still divide the formation, still they preserve the particle mm -hmm. number. Mm-hmm. Even more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But since you have to do all the energy, yeah, it's not actually giving that information about the real particles. Because uh, we start from the free theory, like a uh, asymptotic state is the same as yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Asymptotic theory still there, there is a chance. Particle, right? Yeah. Of yeah. So asymptotic state is just a, because it's free theory. Uh, you don't have to consider ocean because it's just that just one particle state and two particle state is the same as ocean thirteen, right? Then that state you can ask how they deform that contain this represented by this and deform energy deformation, and then we see that such a alpha state, which is in the undeformed theory, is a particle state and the 
they follow the same like uh, natural flow. How can I say? Yeah. Um. So I think uh, at least free theory. It's uh, alpha is okay, but uh, for for you know, interacting like sine Gordon and so on. Yeah, that may be alpha, right? Alpha is not. Why? Because the number stuck to longer than up to two. Why it's not pre? Because if you expand uh -huh. this in higher order, uh -huh. it's always a sum like a particular equation operator, analyze operators in higher power. Yeah, because here, you, as you see, H and the P itself, P0 and H0, preserve the particular number, right? Because A dagger A, basically. Uh -huh. So the function of H and T preserve the number of particle in alpha, in this form, at least. Of course, this is conjecture, but. Uh, so the higher power the H tilde, the form of H tilde, preserve part. But uh, this, uh, the second one, uh, I'm not so sure that, yeah. So free fermion case is the uh, uh, same, but uh, there is a quite qualitative difference. So that is very interesting. And uh, that is very also important uh, for the uh, talk. And uh, here, like a scalar field, we can calculate the conjugate momentum by varying the Lagrange, uh, derivative of Lagrangian with the psi dot. And uh, unlike the scalar field, the right-hand side does not include the time derivative. So that's why, uh, so instead of, so you cannot in express a phi, psi dot in terms of the other canonical uh, uh, variable. So this is uh, give the, the second class constraint. And then from the that size class constraint, you can calculate the direct uh, bracket. And then that gives the user uh, direct bracket of the uh, uh, fermion. Or in the quantum, if you go to the quantum, that gives the uh, user anti commutation relation of fermion. So that's it. So that's why we don't talk about the conjugate momentum of the fermion because it's the same as psi. So TT bar, now it's the same in the TT bar deformation of free formula, but it's simpler than the scalar field because, because of Fermi statistics, the, uh, their, the form of the uh, formion is very restricted. The, there are not many uh, non-vanishing terms because of Fermi statistics. So the answer is uh, truncated at the quartic level, the higher power is just vanishing. So you can also confirm that this uh, uh, quartic term, up to quartic term, it solved the flow equation exactly. So this is the, the just answer. There is no series. And uh, in the same way, uh, by the way, here we are using the weather procedure, not the metric variation. So the energy moment tensor is not symmetric. And then I use it. And, and then I calculate the energy, uh, the conjugate momentum. And then again, there is no side on the right hand side, which means that Lagrangian of the this deformed, uh, deformed Lagrangian the, uh, time derivative appear only linearly. So that's the region. And then it gives the, uh, again, second class constraint. And then you can also calculate the uh, Dirac bracket. So, uh, user Dirac bracket of the formula is deformed. And then you can also calculate the Hamiltonian. It's very easy. And the, because the time derivative is uh, linear, appear linear in the Lagrangian, uh, because of the Hamiltonian is uh, formally looks same as the, exactly the same as the free Hamiltonian. There is no lambda dependence of the uh, deformed Hamiltonian. So this is a, uh, uh, easy to calculate, but it's strange because uh, Hamilton does not have lambda, but how can you get the uh, spec, uh, lambda dependence in the spectrum? So uh, you can compare, there is uh, some secret. So scalar field case, uh, the deformed Hamiltonian has lambda dependence. And uh, this 
uh, algebra of the phase space variable is not changed. So it's a canonical transformation. So this lambda depends on of Hamiltonian gives the lambda depends on the terms of the uh, spectrum. However, for many case, deformed Hamiltonian does not have lambda dependence. However, the algebra of the phase space variable is deformed, as we see here. So because of, and because of that, uh, this generator, this algebra, deformed uh, algebra, generates the lambda dependence of the spectrum. That's what we will see. So we want uh, uh, the transformation from the, this Hamiltonian. It looks uh, free, but uh, it, this psi is uh, now deformed uh, fermion. So because of that, the Dirac bracket is very complicated. The, from this one, we want to uh, find some transformation to the Hamiltonian where this H tilde is again same, same as the before. It's uh, expressed in terms of the undeformed Hamiltonian and you can also express and and the each one is uh, just a free fermion hamiltonian and uh, so b is a free fermion oscillator which is set by user user uh, anti commutation relation so here this transformation is not the canonical so that's a big, big difference uh, from the scalar field so again the requirement is same we also consider calculate the perturbatively in lambda and we will require that this very complicated uh, drug rocket is mapped to the this simple uh, simple uh, anti commutation relation or drug rocket and uh, again this leads to the inhomogeneous differential equation for the this psi one first order and then we can also determine that this homogeneous homogeneous part by demanding the H and the H tilde is same and the P and P tilde is the same. And the, this is the answer. So again, first order is a cubic. And uh, this we confirm at the classical level and quantum level up to order lambda. In the high order lambda square, it is very complicated. We just gave up because, uh, because I, we thought it's meaningless. If we spend one month, then maybe we can get, but uh, it's maybe second or first order and second, order, maybe it's not that important. So that's why uh, we skip. But uh, there is very, meanwhile, we, there, we found a very interesting also some uh, uh, observation. So far, we discussed the TTBA deformation of free formula. And then we using the energy moment tensor from the NOEDA procedure. And uh, here, this I write down in the uh, light form coordinate because it's easy. But uh, uh, it's very important that uh, when you go to the user like a Cartesian coordinate, there is no uh, second uh, the quadratic in time derivative. So there is no such a term. So that's why we obtain the uh, nice uh, uh, second class constraint. However, if we're using the, this uh, energy moment tensor, uh, from the uh, uh, metric variation, which is symmetric, then such a Lagrangian reproduces uh, this uh, distance, the quadratic in the time derivative. And uh, that is a really big problem. And uh, I will show what's the problem. So this is a result. So one here, there, I using the, this uh, Noether energy one tensor. So there is no quadratic, it's not quadratic in time derivative. But uh, if, when I'm using the symmetric energy moment tensor, there is this term, which is the quadratic in time derivative. It's a little bit similar to the scalar field. So let's see the, the problem. So it has this term. Then you can also calculate the, the conjugate momentum by uh, the, the, from the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to psi dot. Then on the right-hand side, like a scalar field, you have psi dot here. Of course, it's uh, very difficult to convert, convert this relation. So, I mean, the invert this relation to express psi dot in, psi dot in terms of other canonical variables. But uh, formally, you can do that. Then the problem is that this is not constrained anymore, like a scalar field. 
So because there is no constraint like a scalar field, that means there, there was some degree freedom which would have been removed by this constraint is now coupled to the system. So this is a kind of doubling of fermion degree freedom. This uh, uh, was studied uh, uh, as a simplex fermion uh, by Andre and uh, in the also DSGF. They very, they, 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 it's a very interesting property. And uh, in the scalar field case, uh, there is also uh, like an Ostrograsky instability. It, they also have a very similar feature. The essence is the same. So, so the one of the another a important feature of the T-bar deformation, although people don't talk about too much, is that when we go to the from the IR to the UV, usually in the renormalization group, there would be some new degree of freedom will couple because uh, you can consider reverse direction, then you can easily guess that uh, from the UV to IR, the some degree problem is decoupled, but if you go reverse direction, the new degree problem come. But the TT bar deformation, so far, we don't talk about the new degree freedom. That is, uh, I thought it's a very nice property. But uh, in this case, if you're using the, some uh, strange energy momentum tensor, then it seems that some new degree freedom now coupled to the system. And the, the problem of the, that such a new degree of freedom is that it has a negative node. So I will give you the, some very simple toy model. So this is uh, the first three term. This is just one dimensional quantum mechanics. So uh, it's very simple. So the first three term is just a usual fermion, but the, I added this uh, uh, psi dot as quadratic in time derivative. So this term is very same as the simplex formula. So this is a mixture between the simplex formula and the usual formula. And then you can, in general, you, you can consider the phase space variable is psi and psi bar and each conjugate momenta phi and phi bar. And the edge before, because of this like a scalar field, there is no constraint. Because of that, Usually we have a B and B dagger, which is a usual uh, a Fermi oscillator, but the, there is additional uh, os Fermi oscillator, which has a very strange anti-commutation relation. And because of that, we have uh, previously, in the free Fermi case, we have a vacuum and uh, this uh, uh, excited state, but uh, because of the dagger, we have uh, uh, additional two more uh, states in the fork space. And in this quantum mechanical case, we can calculate exactly everything. So for your energy spectrum, in the final lambda, they have a certain, like, uh, uh, and you can exactly calculate the energy. But uh, as the lambda goes to zero, they have uh, this additional extra states, which is generated by C and C uh, dagger, has one over lambda energy gap. So that's why it's, uh, uh, natural because when lambda goes to zero, this will be vanishing, and uh, we have to go back to the free formula. So from the energy spectrum, this is one because of one, one over lambda energy gap. So this energy gap now become infinite. So this uh, uh, state is now decoupled. So we end up with a nice uh, like a free formula, usual Fock space uh, state, state, and uh, those extra states. The problem with those extra state is that it has negative node. You can easily show this using the, this uh, uh, strange anti-commutation relation. The problem with that, because of negative node state, you can easily expect that it might be non-unitary because the norm is negative. But the, that is, Andre suggests very nice, interesting, like a uh, cure to the, this problem. So uh, you can, in general, define the certain operator J in the in our quantum mechanical uh, model. You, you can define this way. Then the, which flip the sign of the C. Only sign. B is just, just same, but the C, you flip the sign of C. Then now you can define the new inner product 
by this j by inserting j. So this is very similar to the supersymmetry. Uh, but the, yeah, but the, in this uh, new inner product now state is positive, well defined. So it's nice. So now negative norm problem disappear. And uh, you can do the similar thing in the in the uh, this t bar deformation. Uh, but the t bar deformation is it's very difficult because of certain like a uh, technical issue. So usually it's uh, very difficult. To, but the, we, based on the this toy model, we can expect that those extra degree freedom would be, have divergent energy gap when lambda goes to zero limit. So it will be decoupled when lambda equals zero, which is uh, just an undeformed theory. However, there is uh, some like a uh, confusion because uh, we derived, uh, we know that there is universal formula of the Titiba deformation, like uh, energy deformed energy spectrum. So when we take a lambda goes to zero limit, this energy uh, does not diverge. So it's finite. But uh, here I said that it's divergent energy gap. So there is some discrepancy. So which one is correct? So here's uh, the, the, the uh, secret. So uh, here, usually in this general, uh, the, the analysis for the generic value of lambda is very difficult. This is because here we conjugate momentum is uh, now is, is this one that uh, now we cannot ex invert this relation so that uh, we, it's very difficult to express a side in terms of other phase space variable. If that is just, just a boson, you can just move, uh, just divide by this one, but this is a formula, so you cannot do that in principle. However, in large lambda case, you can we can do that. So that's what we did. And uh, what we found there is that here we define the uj inner product so that the uh, inner product is positive. This means that you have to define, redefine the uh, Hermitian conjugation. So we have to define new j Hermitian conjugation. Then this h and p was a Hermitian operator. However, we have to now check whether this Hamiltonian and the P is now J, J Hermitian or not. So in general, they are not J Hermitian. So that's the, that's the problem. But in quantum mechanical model, this J operator that I showed before is not uniquely de de determined. Always I can using the sample group transformation and uh, so that uh, I can change the definition of J. I, even though I didn't show the detail. So then using the that Bogorov transformation, we can always find uh, some new J operator where this Hamiltonian is J Hermitian. So in, uh, in short, uh, you can always make a, a Hamiltonian to be J Hermitian. However, the problem is TT uh, uh, deformation. So in the TT deformation, you can also do the same thing. You can using the Bogorov transformation uh, to make uh, either Hamiltonian or conjugate momentum uh, to be uh, J Hermitian. However, you cannot do make them both H and P J Hermitian at the same time. That's the problem. Which that means that this energy momentum eigenstate is not also gonna in general. Usually it's just in the undergrad that we prove that the eigenvector for the Hermitian operator is orthogonal uh, when the eigenvalue is different. But the, when, uh, when the operator is not the Hermitian, that is not guaranteed in general. That means that we, when we derive the, this uh, deformed energy, we highly using the fact that this energy momentum eigenstate is orthogonal, but the, that fails. And every like a step is failed. So, so this universal formula is not applicable for the, this negative norm state. So that's the, so, so that uh, now, because we don't, we cannot believe this one, then it should behave some different way. So, so far 
we found that this uh, uh, noidal procedure always gives a good answer, but uh, the other one uh, uh, does not. No. Still, we can do that. But uh, you can ask, uh, what is guideline for the, this good TTV deformation, which NM1 tensor we have to use? And uh, already, this is not my original work or Spondilini and uh, for Rope and any other paper already show that string action give the correct answer, good answer. So that's why we start with the, uh, we study the n equal one, comma one supersymmetric model, and it's a TTBA deformation. So, so this, our TTBA deformation is not supersymmetric on the, because right hand side is non supersymmetric. So you can guess, you can guess that it's break the supersymmetry. However, supersymmetry based on the this the uh, de forming degeneracy. So on the form theory has a nice uh, uh, the Bose forming degeneracy. They have the same degeneracy, except for the vacuum. And uh, this deform deformation formula, uh, the deformation formula for the energy spectrum does not care whether state is boson or fermion, which means that. Both bosonic state and fermion state deformed at the same uh, in the same way. That means that boson both forming degeneracy still preserve after deform. So it is you can this is kind of proof that uh, even after the deformation, the both forming degeneracy will be preserved and uh, it should be supersymmetric. However, non-trivial thing is that is there a local expression for the supercharge? That is very non-trivial. And what is the deformed supersymmetric transformation? Is it, is, it, is it local expression or is it quite complicated? That is very non-trivial. That's what we did. So let me quickly go there. The procedure is the same. The only difference is that the Lagrangian is now scalar field and the fermion. And then Many people also obtained this deformed Lagrangian of the this n equal one supersymmetric model. This is very complicated. It's already known. Exact form is already known. Just for the presentation, I uh, omit. And uh, I also obtained the co conjugate moment momentum and uh, calculate the calculate the uh, second class constraint and uh, obtain the Dirac bracket. That's the same as before, but it is just very complicated. But we also obtain the exact form. I just uh, omit it, but the, the exact form is all in the paper. And the scalar field is the same. In the end, it turned out the same, but the fermion is very complicated. And now we found that supercharge in this expression. So you might say that this is the same as, looks similar to the, it is, formally looks same as a free case, but it's quite different because the free case conjugate momentum is same as phi dot. However, TT by deform case, this phi dot is completely different from phi uh, conjugate momentum because of deformation. So in the configuration variable, this is a very complicated expression, but the, when we express in terms of the uh, canonical variable, then it's very simple. And then uh, we also show that, uh, of course, uh, we found that and uh, we showed that they commute with the uh, Hamiltonian and the uh, conjugate momentum. And uh, we also found that the Hamiltonian and the uh, conjugate momentum can be expressed in this way. So it is uh, as it uh, formally looks the same as a free case. In addition to the super uh, charge, we also found a global symmetry. One global symmetry is the shift the scalar field by constant, and uh, it just gives uh, this one. And uh, there is another global fermion, global symmetry, which shifts the fermion by uh, Grassmannian old uh, constant. And uh, this is the uh, 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 that charge. And uh, they also, of course, uh, commit with the uh, Hamiltonian and momentum. And uh, we calculate the uh, algebra of them. So this super symmetry algebra of the TTV deformation, deformed supercharge is the same as uh, Free case. So this supersymmetric algebra is not deformed. N equal one comma one is not deformed. And the global symmetry, here I just show the this uh, form, fermionic global charges, and they all have this kind of uh, uh, algebra. And the, between them, 
has this kind of algebra. So this P, P is the uh, bosonic global charge, and the W is uh, like a winding charge when scalar field is compactified only. And if that is not non-compactified, this is zero. So you might wonder why I'm using the Q1 and Q2. The reason is that it relates to the uh, string. So there is two approaches to the relation to the string, relation to the string action and the uh, TT by deformation. And uh, I will just talk about the second spondylin and follow-up approach. In the paper, we talk about the both of them, but uh, because of presentation, I only talk about the, this one. And uh, because of time is not enough, I will just skip the, the some basic one. So let, we will consider the n equal one, uh, n equal two green Schwartz action for the three D target space, and uh, this is well known like a uh, Lagrangian. And the one important part is uh, this Westmino term. This is a very play crucial role in the, our calculation. And uh, we will consider the space-time supersymmetry in the end. And uh, this one is uh, suggested by uh, the Spondilini at H com company and also Prolog. And uh, here we will discuss the, uh, we'll consider the shifted light cone. So this light cone, the pinch of light cone is just slightly changed by this lambda, shifted. And uh, this lambda in the end relate to the TT bar deformation parameter. And uh, we will consider the flat target space, but, but the, because of the new definition of the uh, light cone, so that's why it, the uh, metric is slightly uh, shifted, but uh, it's just flat metric. And here it's uh, important for us. So this deformation parameter lambda is non-negative, positive. This is because in the end, we will take a light cone coordinate, a light cone, a light, light cone quantization, which means that this X plus should be either null or time length. Then in that condition is in the end related to the lambda is positive or zero. So that's why this usually in TT body formation whether lambda is positive or negative is a kind of not not natural, I depend on context, but in this case, this relation holds when the lambda is positive or zero. And uh, we will take, a, as I said, light one gauge, and uh, this uh, X2 component will become the scalar field in TT body formation. And uh, in the green short, we have to take a uh, fixed uh, uh, kappa symmetry. And uh, we will, as, as usual, we take uh, this kappa symmetry a choice, and then this, uh, this component will become the fermion in the TT body formation. And uh, one more thing is uh, more important is uh, we will take a light cone gauge and, uh, and uh, in addition to that, we take a discrete light cone quantization, which means that in the long time of people uh, choose, the, choose this, uh, uh, this discrete light cone quantization for simplicity, that it means that X minus is compactified. So because X minus coordinate is compactified, then means uh, there is a winding number along the X minus direction. This is uh, important because uh, in the string, we have to take a level matching condition. And that level matching condition give you the relation between the momentum P operator. This P is the momentum operator in the TT body formation. So this P is the momentum like operator for the X2 direction, X2 component. And uh, that is related to the, this uh, uh, winding charges, winding, winding charges. So the quantization of the momentum operator of the TT bar deformation comes from the, this uh, uh, winding number. So now in the previous uh, long slide, we obtained uh, this TT bar deformation, uh, the uh, TT bar deformed supersymmetry and the global symmetry. And uh, this turned out to be exactly the same as uh, uh, supersymmetry algebra of the 3D uh, target space. So we will consider the supersymmetric, uh, super Poincaré algebra, and uh, there we can consider the supersymmetry, n equal two. And uh, usually we have this term. And because of the, the uh, uh, Wetzmino written, uh, Wetzmino term, there is additional contribution when there is uh, like a winding, compact 
compactified direction. So there is an additional term. So here we take a x plus to be time, which is the time in the worksheet. So that's why this uh, this part is uh, charge related to the charge of the translation along the x plus direction, which now become the Hamiltonian. And uh, this this one is a translation along the uh, x two target uh, space that correspond to the bosonic global charge. So this is a shift to the scalar field by some constant. So that, that's why it up here. And uh, now, as I said, by level matching condition, this winding number is uh, identified with the momentum operator of the uh, TT body formation. So that's why it up here. So, so this one is exactly the same as this, what I found from the uh, TT body formation side. And of course, uh, you can wonder, uh, the super number of supercharges is different from the n equal one comma one to the n equal one comma one from the three D n equal two. The reason is that half of the super symmetry is broken by the uh, uh, the com compactified direction. So this uh, uh, history called the partially broken rigid super symmetry, and you can also find uh, how it break broken and they broken uh, super charge now become the uh, fermionic uh, global symmetry in the TT body formation. And uh, another interesting part is the PPS state. So n equal one comma one field theory, it's hard to think of the PPS state, but the n equal two 3D uh, string, you can easily study the, I think it's, it's easy to study the PPS state and the, you can translate into it into the TT body formation. And the there, and uh, you can just without the TT body formation, you can uh, ask what is the BPS uh, condition. And uh, this is the BPS condition. And uh, it turns out that it's the exact same uh, formula to the TT body formation uh, 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 deformed deformation of the energy spectrum. So this looks complicated, but uh, it, you, you can realize that it's the same as the deformation uh, formula. So so this, this means that the BPS states now protected under the TT body formation. And uh, I will suggest some future work and uh, I also would like to understand the systematic way to find the, the map that I uh, uh, obtained the, from the beginning of the slide. And another internet part is the, this uh, extra, extra negative norm states. And I would like to find some, it is very tempting to relate to them with the other branch of the deformation spectrum. So when you solve the, uh, this, uh, uh, you, when you derive the uh, energy, deformed energy spectrum, there are two branches, but the, we usually take one branch here plus. But the, in principle, you can consider the, the other branch. And the, that is uh, really, uh, when lambda goes to zero limit, it go, it's like a behavior like a one over lambda. So behavior looks similar as an extra negative norm state, but uh, it's just a wish for thinking. I couldn't prove it yet, but uh, if there is a way to connect them, it would be very interesting. Also from the string side, we, I only consider the one winding sector, but uh, it would be very nice to study other sector. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That part I cannot answer. I only consider a very particular case and so it is pretty calculated, but the other like curve space and so on, I have no idea here. So
I don't know. That would be very interesting question. Maybe Andrew has more idea because I heard that, that is laced to the some work in the condensed matter like a PT. Some I, I but I heard that there is some literature, but uh, I don't know how it is. Really, physical system has such a nice, uh, interesting property, but uh, yeah, I don't have any idea. So that is also an interesting feature work. <clears throat> well, we tried, <laughs> you know, we tried to relate it to uh, some kind of model, toy model of high TC, but uh, you know, it was a continuum model. There was no lattice, and you know, at that time. Um, there wasn't as much data as there is now on on the high dc materials and it seems like you really need to have that lattice there so it was kind of a toy model the unitarity was a bit of a problem but it was nice because it had both magnetic uh order and uh uh you know the kinds of things that you, you find in high dc so the magnetic phases and other phases also but anyway Okay, then let's turn to our number again. And today's session is uh, over. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Okay, yeah, see you tomorrow.